fuck, fuck. I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing Got a taste for blood and my tongue keeps bleeding From the words I spit, so sharp, so freezing So cold, behold, frostbite, they feeling I could tear you apart or I could go heal them Don't believe in fate, don't believe in feelings I just need a taste and my mind starts peeling I don't pace myself, I grind on kneeling Got lust for change, I just love the feeling uh. I ain't gonna give up Got too little time, I'ma live up Head down, push forward through the tough times Cause anything worth doing is a tough climb and I ain't gonna give up Got too little time, I'ma live up Head down, push forward through the tough times Cause anything worth doing is a tough Cause climb Cause I'ma live life for the fight Yeah, I'm here to get it I got drive, got sight Always have a vision I go by a night I be in my feelings I'ma be fine Need time and I'll soon be winning I live life for the fight Yeah, I'm here to get it I got drive, got sight Always have a vision I go by a night I be in my feelings I'ma be fine Need time and I'll soon be winning I can feel the blood creeping up From the heathens Got will, got fight Got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat Then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me Hope you're ready for a demon I can feel the blood creeping up From the heathens Got will, got fight Got pride, got reason If you wanna go eat Then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me Hope you're ready for a demon Busy Paul, Busy Paul, Moderator Extraordinaire, Busy Paul, Vodka Bam, welcome Vodka Bam, Learn and Grow with Ann, Learn and Grow with Ann. Hey Jimmy, it's Jimmy's Books and Blogs, welcome to the show. 
learn and grow a thing. Judas. Judas crazy. Tink, tink, tink. Scus, 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 scus. Chick, chick, chick. Raise blissful connections. Raise blissful connections. Hey, Scully, everyone in chat. Tonight we're gonna be reading a little more at Driving Poe. So buckle it up. It's Addy Scott, 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 Scott. Brain tingle. Let him eat, let him eat, let him eat, let him eat, let him eat. Check, check, let him eat, let him eat. It's let him Tingle, tingle, tingle. Blood Dragoon, Blood Dragoon, moderator extraordinary. And Jenny's books and blogs. How you queen me? How you doing, darling? It's Queen K and Queen K and Disco Bob tingles, Disco Bob tingles, Disco Bob tingles. Woo, woo, woo. Bella. Hey, Bella. How you doing? Bella tingles. Sco, 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 sco. My broska 23KC. My broska 23KC in the house, in the house. Check 23KC. Coffee artist, coffee artist, coffee artist. I have a story. <laughs> Daddy Pickle. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Art Van Delay. Art Van Delay. Welcome to the House of Thrones. Tingles for everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the House of Flowers. I'm Scully, the author that reads to you. I read my novels, I've written a few. Other works in the public domain and submissions from people like you. And don't forget to check out our new merch link there. You can go find you some t-shirts, mugs, doggy sweaters, etc. How's Jenny doing tonight? Let's read Jenny. This is his Izzy Scar and Scully Pop. Roll 
How you doing, Bella? I see you. Scully ASMR. Ding, 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 ding. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome in River Been Growing 420. River Been Growing 420. And ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome in the backyard trucker. Scus, 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 scus. Wear those earbuds if you can. Tingles down your spine. Jenny, Jenny Tingles. Backyard, backyard trucker, backyard trucker, backyard trucker. It's Bella Ska. Ska, 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 ska. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. I want to drop the link. Time to drop the Izzy Pop to link for Izzy Pop. Learn and grow with it. Let me check the volume. You're looking good on the volume, mode. Not looking at the great on the volume. Check, 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 check. That's right, 23KC, hit the light. Started now, Lawless is here. What's up? Beyond Cola. Yankee Cow, Yankee Cow, Yankee Cow. Broska, Yankee Cow. Tonight, we're going to be reading Edgar Allan Poe, The Pit and the Pen Pendulum, second half. And all these productions of Poe will go into a compilation down the road, which I'll remaster. So, if you hear me go, check, 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 that means I messed up. 
pins for editing purposes. Reach out to me if you have a business inquiry or an idea for a story or anything. jscullybooks.com or excuse me, jscullybooks at gmail.com. <laughs> hey, Cassie. This is Cassie with Tales Told in the Dark, another awesome narrator. T-E-W-P in the house. What's up, Broska? There's our Broska moderator extraordinaire, T-W-P popcorn. That's right, Jenny. I've got some variety also. Not much, though, says a backyard trucker. Let's see. Let's play one more song here. Get a little giggity with some of that blues. Get us in the mood. Y'all pour yourself a stiff one. Or roll it up if you got it. Or melt down some of that buttered popcorn. Mm-hmm. That's right, Ray. Lawless TV. That's right, pop, pop, pop. She's a one cool cat. Books on tape with a twist. It's the insane reading show. Leave your code at the front with the concierge. It'll be there for the show. Right. Mm-hmm. Brain tingles. Skus, 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 skus. Butt files, butt files. My broskus butt files. It's the butt files. Learn and grow with me. Oh, it was a weird, creepy dude. <clears throat> I ate bug files. I'm going to start the show off tonight with a trailer by Izzy. And a couple of uh, trailers for my novels, Dutch Coffee Shop, and Lazy Le Bon Temple, or in English, Let the Good Times Roll. scary don't forget to hit the like subscribe to the channel it's that little red button below the video and if you're on a phone don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. You're coming in, share it out. That's right, check membership status to see if you have a milestone, everyone. Otherwise, 
Let's get some color in that chat and light it up. Looks something like that. TWP Push them in D. It's time to relax. You worked hard today. Scully's going to read to you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. In the shadows of the literary world, a unique figure lurks, weaving tales that chill the bones and stir the soul. A well-dressed enigma, he is known only by a singular name, Scully Pasta. What this means is that his stories are copied and pasted all over the internet. This skeletal scribe, a master of suspense and intrigue, beckons you to join him as he delves into the pages of his latest chilling narrative, Dutch Coffee Shop. Our journey begins with William Dempsey, a man of resilience and determination. A man burdened by the weight of loss, but fueled by an ember of hope. A whisper, a rumor, a half-believed truth that his brother, long thought dead, still walks the earth. And so he ventures to the heart of Europe, to the vibrant city of Amsterdam, in pursuit of this elusive ghost from his past. Stepping into Amsterdam, the city unfurls like a tapestry of mystery and charm, a labyrinth of narrow streets, glimmering canals and coffee shops that promise more than just a caffeine fix. But beneath the allure lies a city draped in shadows, a world where danger lurks around every corner. Dempsey's quest takes him through the infamous red light district, a place of desire and deceit, where faces hide secrets and every smile has a price. His every step echoes with the rhythm of this pulsating city, a symphony of intrigue that carries him deeper into the heart of Amsterdam's underworld. Against a backdrop of mobsters and mystery, Dempsey navigates through this treacherous terrain, his resolve unshaken. Every lead, every clue, every hushed whisper draws him closer to the truth, a truth that promises redemption or perhaps a bitter cup of betrayal. In the hands of Scully, the well-dressed skeleton author, Amsterdam transforms into a playground of suspense a city where every corner holds a secret, every alley a potential ambush, every coffee shop a clandestine meeting. And at the center of it all, William Dempsey, a man on a mission, a man chasing shadows, a man willing to risk it all for the sake of family. So, brace yourself as Scully takes you on a thrilling journey through the heart of Amsterdam, a journey that promises to keep you on the edge of your seat, a journey that will make your heart race and your mind whirl. This is Dutch Coffee Shop, a tale of suspense, intrigue, and redemption. Welcome to the world of Scully. In the world of thrilling tales, one name stands out, Scully Pasta, an enigmatic author whose gripping narratives have taken the internet by storm, leaving an indelible mark on the collective psyche of millions. His stories, copied and pasted across the web, have captivated audiences far and wide with their unique blend of suspense, horror, and mystery. Scully Pasta, through his ingenious storytelling, has carved a niche for himself in the vast world of online literature. As we delve into his latest masterpiece, a tale of unlikely friendships and hidden sins set in the heartland of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, prepare to be thrilled, chilled, and utterly captivated. So sit back, relax, and let's unravel the mystifying world of Margie and Boudreaux, painted by the masterful strokes of Scully Pasta. On the Mississippi Gulf Coast, a unique friendship is born. Every Sunday, in the same booth at the Griddle Hut, two unlikely companions share their lives over a hearty breakfast. Meet Margie Mine, a 20-year-old culinary prodigy fresh from France, and Michel Boudreau, an 80-year-old Cajun man whose words dance on the tongue, half English, half French. They formed a bond over shared stories and fried eggs. 
Margie, with her dreams of a restaurant, a gift from her soon-to-be inheritance, and Boudreaux, with his deep-rooted Cajun wisdom, are the heart of this tale. Yet, they are not alone. Seven other patrons, regulars just like them, fill the diner with their presence, and Boudreaux, the observant old man, has been watching them. Each, in his eyes, embodies one of the seven deadly sins, but little does Margie know, Boudreaux has been keeping a secret. He has been investigating the seven regular patrons, each representing a deadly sin. On a significant Sunday, the tenth one, Boudreaux decides it's time to reveal his secret. The old Cajun man, a regular at the griddle hut, has been studying the seven patrons he and Margie often joke with. He has identified each with a deadly sin, pride, envy, wrath, sloth, greed, gluttony, and lust. They are all there, embodied in the patrons they've known for ten Sundays. Boudreaux, a believer in ancient wisdom, considers ten the perfect number. It signifies completion, a cycle fulfilled. And so, on this tenth Sunday, he decides it's time to unveil the truth. Pulling out an old Colt 45, the atmosphere in the diner shifts. Boudreaux, now holding everyone's attention, begins to reveal the secrets he's uncovered, each revelation more shocking than the last, exposing the patrons for who they truly are. Throughout the night, Boudreaux confronts the seven, forcing them to face their sins. And as the tension rises, Margie will learn some truths about herself. As the night unfolds, a group forms through virtue that must confront a moral dilemma that has been looming over their lives, the Gulf oil spill. This environmental catastrophe has seeped into their lives like the very oil that tarnishes their coastline, leaving a stain on their community that cannot be ignored. The seven, once bound by their shared sins, are now united by a new purpose. As they peel back the layers of their lives, they uncover the far-reaching impact of the spill on their livelihoods, their families, their dreams. It's a stark reminder of man's capacity for destruction, but also his potential for redemption. They must navigate this murky sea of truth together, each grappling with their own sins while wrestling with the collective conscience of their community. Laissez les bon temps rouler is a thrilling exploration of morality and sin. Can we face our true selves when confronted by the mirror of truth? Find this gripping tale at all major bookstores and online retailers. All right, thank you so much, everybody. That was from my novel, Laissez les bon temps rouler, and the... First trailer was Dutch Coffee Shop. You can find those at Amazon. Tonight, we're going to be reading the second half of The Pit and the Pendulum. So kick back, relax, enjoy yourself. I'll probably take a break here or there. Uh, say hello to everybody. It's great to see you, Lawless TV. Z-Pop. Coming in with that banger, that five spot banger. And Yankee Kyle got one. Thank you so much, Izzy. Ray got one. Sister Callie DC. Yay. Hanging with Mr. J. Thank you so much, Izzy Pop. Very kind of you. Let's see those emojis, guys. A bunch of members in here now. We, we had 101 members when we started the stream tonight. So that puts us up to 106. Let's get this uh, road to 150 going, guys. Lawless, fill that up with those emojis, man. Come on, Ray. Let's see it, Kyle. Load it up. Yes, everybody wish Izzy Pop happy birthday today. A big scus, 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 scus in there for her. Scus, Izzy Pop. Scus, 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 scus. Emojis or scus? Boom, chicka, rah. Boom, check me out, easy, Papa. Oh, Papa. Tingle, 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 tingle. Skitty, kitty, 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 kitty.
Yeah, right. Glad people who actually come here got them this time. Awesome. Oh, we need to get an Anne membership. She didn't get one. Learn and grow with Anne. I can no longer doubt the doom prepared for me by monkish ingenuity and torture. My cognizance of the pit had become known to the inquisitorial agents. The pit, whose horrors had been destined for so bold or recusant as myself. The pit, typical of hell. And regarded by rumor as the ultimate soul of all their punishments. The plunge into this pit I had avoided by the merest of accidents. And I knew that surprise or entrapment into torment formed an important portion of all the grotesquerie of these dungeons of death. Having failed to fall, it was no part of the demon plan to hurl me into the abyss. And thus, there being no alternative, a different and a milder destruction awaited me. Milder. I half smiled, half smiled in my agony as I thought of such application of such a term. What boots it to tell of the long, long hours of horror more than mortal during which I counted the rushing vibrations of the steel? Inch by inch, line by line, with a descent only appreciable at intervals that seemed ages. Down and still down it came. Days passed. It might have been that many days passed ere it swept so closely over me as to fan me with its accurate breath. The odor of the sharp steel forced itself into my nostrils. I prayed. I wearied heaven with my prayer for its more speedy descent. I grew frantically mad and struggled to force myself upward against the sweep of the fearful scimitar. And then I felt suddenly calm, lay smiling at the glittering death, as a child at some rare bauble. There was another interval of utter insensibility. It was brief, or upon again lapsing into life, there had been no perceptible descent in the pendulum. But it might have been long, for I knew there were demons who took note of my swoon, could have arrested the vibration at pleasure. Upon my recovery, too, I, I felt very uh, inexpressibly sick and weak, as if through long inanition. Even amid the agonies of that period, the human nature craved food. Painful effort, I outstretched my left arm as far as my bonds permitted and took possession of the small remnant which had been spared me by the rats. As I put a portion of it within my lips, there rushed to my mind a half formed thought of joy, of hope. Yeah, what business had I with hope? 
It was, as I say, a half-formed thought. Man has many such which are never completed. I felt that it was of joy, of hope. But I felt also that it had perished in this formation. In vain I struggled to perfect, to regain it. Long suffering had nearly annihilated all my ordinary powers of mind. I was an imbecile and an idiot. The vibration of the pendulum was at right angles to my length. I saw that the crescent was designed across the region of the heart. It would fray the surge of my robe. It would return and repeat its operation again and again. Notwithstanding its terrifically wide sweep, some thirty feet or more, and the hissing vigor of its descent, sufficient to sunder these very walls of iron, still the fraying of my robe would be all that, for several minutes, it would accomplish. And at this thought, I paused. I dared not to go farther than this reflection. I dwelt upon it with a pertinacity of attention, as if in so dwelling, I could arrest here the descent of steel. Hey, Sable. I force myself to ponder upon the sound of the crescent as it should pass across the garment. Upon the peculiar thrilling sensation which the friction of cloth produces on the nerves. I ponder upon all this frivolity until my teeth are on edge. Down, steadily down they crept. I took a frenzied pleasure in contrasting its downward with its lateral velocity. To the right, to the left, far and wide, with the shriek of a damned spirit. In my heart with the stealthy pace of the tiger. I alternately laughed. And how does the one or the other idea grew predominant? Down, certainly relentlessly down. It vibrated within three inches of my bosom. I struggled violently, furiously to free my left arm. This was free only from the elbow to the hand. I could reach the ladder from the platter beside me to my mouth great effort, but no farther. Could I have broken the fastenings above the elbow? I would have seized and attempted to arrest the pendulum. I might as well have attempted to arrest an avalanche. Down, down, still unceasingly, still inevitably down. I gasped, struggled at each vibration. I shrunk convulsively at its every sweep. My eyes followed its outward or upward with the eagerness of the most unmeaning despair. 
they closed themselves spasmodically at the descent. Although death would have been a relief. Ugh, how unspeakable. Still. I quivered in every nerve to think how slight a sinking of the machinery would precipitate that keen, glistening axe upon my bosom. It was hope that prompted the nerve to quiver, frame to shrink. It was hope, the hope that triumphs on the rack, that whispers to the death condemned even in the dungeon of the Inquisition. I saw that some 10 or 12 vibrations would bring the still in actual contact with my groan. And with this observation, there came over my spirit all the keen collected calmness of despair. For the first time during many hours, perhaps days, I thought. It now occurred to me that the bandage or which enveloped me was unique. I was tied by no separate cord. The first stroke of the razor-like crescent athwart any portion of the band was so detached it that it might be unwound from my person by means of my left hand. But how fearful in that case. The proximity of the steel. The result of the sluggish struggle, how deadly. Or was it likely, moreover, that the minions of the torturer had not foreseen and provided for this possibility? Was it probable that the bandage crossed my bosom in the track of the pendulum? Dreading to find my faint, and, as it seemed, my last hope frustrated, I so far elevated my head as to obtain a distinct view of my breast. The surcingle enveloped my limbs and body close in all directions, save in the path of the destroying crescent. Kitty, 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 kitty. Scarcely had I dropped my head back in its original position when there flashed upon my mind what I cannot better describe then. As the in unformed half of that idea of deliverance to which I have previously alluded. The whole thought was now present, feeble, scarcely sane, scarcely definite, but still entire. I proceeded at once with the nervous energy of despair to attempt its execution. For many hours, the immediate vicinity of the low framework upon which I lay had been literally swarming with rats. They were wild, bold, ravenous, their red eyes glaring upon me as if they waited but for motionlessness. My part to make me their prey. To what food I thought. Have they been accustomed to them well? Let's see here, guys. I need to skip forward. Oh, 
let the brain tingle again. Discuss, discuss, discuss. Get her done, get her done. They had devoured in spite of all my efforts to prevent them, all but a small remnant of the contents of the dish. I had fallen into an habitual seesaw or wave of the hand about the platter, and at length the unconscious uniformity of the movement deprived it of effect. In their voracity, the vermin frequently fastened their sharp fangs in my fingers. The particles of the oily and spicy vion which now remained, I thoroughly rubbed the bandage wherever I could reach it. Then raising my hand from the floor, I lay breathlessly still. At first, the ravenous animals were startled and terrified at the change and at the cessation of movement. They shrank alarmedly back. Many sought the well. This was only for a moment. I had not counted in vain upon their voracity. Observing that I remained without motion, one or two of the boulders leaped upon the framework and smelt at the circuncle. It seemed the signal for a general rush. For from the well they hurried in fresh troops. They clung to the wood, they overran it, and leaped in hundreds upon my person. And the measured movement of the pendulum disturbed them not at all. Avoiding its stokes, they busied themselves with the anointed bandage. They pressed, they swarmed upon me in ever accumulating heaps. They ribbed upon my throat. The cold lips sought my own. I was half stifled by their thronging pressure. Disgust, for which the world had no name, swelled my bosom and chilled with a heavy clamming in my heart. In one minute, uh, I felt that the struggle would be over. Plainly, I perceived the loosening of the bandage. I knew that in more than one place it must already be severed. The more human resolution only still. Hey, TG. How you doing this evening? Reading the second half of The Pit and the Pendulum by Edgar Allan Poe. Come on in. We've got plenty of seats left here for you. Nor had I erred in my calculations. Nor had I endured in vain. I at length felt that I was free. Bandages hung in ribbons from my body. The stroke of the pendulum already pressed upon my bosom. It had to fight at the surge of the road. It cut through the linen beneath. Twice again it swung, and a sharp sense of pain shot through every nerve. But the moment of escape had arrived. And at a wave of my hand, my deliverers hurried tumultuously away. With steady movement, cautious, sidelong. I slid from the embrace of the bandage and beyond the reach of the scimitar. 
for the moment at least. I was free. Free. And in the grasp of the Inquisition. I scarcely stepped from my wooden bed of horror upon the stone floor of the prison when the motion of the hellish machine ceased and I beheld it drawn up by some invisible force through the ceiling. And this was a lesson which I took desperately to heart. My every motion was undoubtedly what? Three. I'd but escape death in one form of agony to be delivered unto worse than death in some other. That thought I rolled my eyes nervously around on the barriers of iron that hemmed me in. Something unusual, some change which at first I could not appreciate. It was obvious. Taking place in the apartment. Many, many minutes of dreamy and trembling abstraction. I busied myself in vain and connected conjecture. During this period, I became aware for the first time of the origin of the sulfurous light which illuminated the cell. It proceeded from the fissure, about oh, half an inch in length, extending entirely around the prison at the base of the walls which thus appeared and were completely separated from the floor. I endeavored, but of course in vain, to look through the aperture. Thank you so much. Doing very well. We just got a little bit more to read there. We'll be done. I think it's coming out real nice. PG, how you doing this evening? Sable? You doing all right? There's Izzy. I noticed the corner of my eye. You said you'd be right back. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming out tonight. Sorry, I haven't learned how to tag my merch products yet, but you can hit that link if you're interested in something. Learn and grow with Ann. Learn and grow with Ann. Say, will you get your channel thing worked out where you can go live again Makes me sweat when I read back that growl and poke, man. Huh. I'm not missing a beat tonight, am I, though? Check, 
Yeah, this ought to be a lot of fun editing down. As I rose from the attempt, the mystery of the alteration in the chamber broke at once upon my understanding. I had observed that. Although the outlines of the figures upon the walls were sufficiently distinct, yet the colors seemed blurred and indefinite. These colors had now assumed and momentarily assumed me a startling and most intense brilliancy that gave to the spectral and fiendish portraitures an aspect that might have thrilled even firmer nerves than my own. Demon eyes of a wild and ghastly vivacity glared upon me in a thousand directions where none had been visible before and gleamed with the lurid luster of a fire that I could not force my imagination to regard as unreal. Unreal. Even while I breathed, there came to my nostrils the breath of the vapor of heated iron. Suffocating odor pervaded the prison. Deeper glow settled each moment in the eyes that glared at my agonies. A richer tint of crimson diffused itself over the pictured horrors of blood. I panted it. I gasped for breath. There could be no doubt of the design of my tormentors. Most unrelenting, most demonic of men. I shrank from the glowing metal to the center of the cell. Amid the thought of the fiery destruction that impeded, the ideas of the coldness of the well came over my soul like balm. There could be no doubt of the design of my tormentors. <laughs> Most unrelenting. I rushed to his deadly brink. I threw my straining vision below. The glare from the enkindled roof illumined its inmost recesses. Yet for a while, moment, my spirit refused to comprehend the meaning of what I saw. At length it forced, it wrestled with some its way in my soul burned itself in upon my shuddering reason. Uh, for a voice to speak, no horror, no any horror but this. With a shriek, I rushed from the march and buried my face in my hands, weeping bitterly. The heat rapidly increased, and once again I looked on shuddering as with a fit of the age. There had been a second change in the cell, and now the change was obviously in the form. As before, it was in vain that I, at first, endeavored to appreciate or understand what was taking place. But long was I left in doubt. The inquisitorial vengeance had been hurried by my twofold escape. And there was to be no more dallying with the king of tickers. The room had been square. And I saw that two of its iron angles were now acute, two consequently obtuse. 
and fearful difference quickly increase with a low rumbling or moaning sound. In an instant, the apartment has shifted its form into that of a lozenge. But the alteration stopped not here. I neither hoped nor desired it this time. I could have clasped the red walls to my bosom as a garment of eternal peace. In death, I said, any death that of the pit. Fool might have not known that into the pit it was the object of the burning iron to urge me. Could I resist its glow? Or even at that, could I withstand its pressure? And now, flatter flatter grew the lozenge with a rapidity that left me no time for contemplation. Its center, or of course, its greatest width, came just over the yawning gulf. I shrank back. The closing walls pressed me resistlessly on one. Length on my seared and writhing body, there was no longer an inch, no longer an inch of foothold on the foot of the prison. I struggled no more, but the agony of my soul found then in one loud, long, and final scream of despair. I felt that I tottered upon the brink. I averted my eyes. There was a discordant hum of human voices. There was a loud blast as of many trumpets. There was a harsh grating as of a thousand thunders. The fiery walls rushed back. An outstretched arm caught my own as I fell, fainting into the abyss. It was that of General LaSalle. The French army had entered Toledo. The Inquisition was in the hands of its enemies. Pit and the Pendulum of Edgar Allan Poe. Woo! Holy shit. Make your stove on up. Very nice, guys. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. That's right. Goodness. You can catch uh, part one on the stream before this one. I couldn't read it all in one session. He does seem obsessed with bosoms, huh? Well, thank you, Anne. Appreciate that. It's always wonderful to see you here in chat. Bosom hair and bosom there. It's always wonderful to be here. I like the story, Judas. 
Saibo. Yeah, I've written, I've read, narrated quite a few Poe works now. Well, I guess I screwed that up. I'll go ahead and show you all the art now. <laughs> I forgot I had this in here. Lord have mercy. I can, I can actually fix all that later though. I wanted to play those <laughs> pictures while I read. <laughs> I can edit them in later, whatever. <laughs> I guess I needed some help tonight. You know, press too many buttons. <laughs> and that picture in the top right corner, that was a painting from Janica. That's pretty badass right there. Yeah, boy, that's some uh, work narrating Poe, man. Probably gonna have to jump in the shower again after that. <laughs> it's some of the art I've made, this is pretty cool. I like that kind of graffiti style type art and this that's actually AI generated as well you believe that I mean that really looks like a stack of old books what else we got here and this is an amazing picture right there. Completely AI generated. And this, you know, motion type stuff, it's, uh, it's getting better and better. You just take a still photo like that and you can animate it. And that one might be cool to animate. <laughs> or no, this one would be cool to animate. What you think, Izzy? <laughs> Who's ready for uh, spring and summer to get here? Yeah, that'd be funny, wouldn't it? Or maybe that one. <laughs> yeah, to easy power. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can I think I can pull the picture in and it'll do that. I'm gonna have to try that. Isn't that a cool picture? some really cool colors to it I mean, if you need help with channel art you can reach out to me or izzy pop i will warn you if you get into like ai art some of the generations come out like demonic looking it's not like they come out perfect on the first go Another one by Izzy. 
let's see here. It's a very cool one right here. That skull skull in the background. <laughs> Judas, Judas likes bosoms too. <laughs> I can't even make y'all be bad tonight. Y'all being too good out there. Yeah, it might be might be the thing. What happened, is he? But postpartum. Whatever they call that. Uh, I'm playing right now. Uh, what is this we playing right now? Yeah, I like that one too. One of my favorites. This is pretty cool too. Mm -mm 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 -mm. slave to the money then you die I'll take you down the only road I've ever been down you know the one that takes you to the places where the veins meet yeah no change I can change I can change I can change but I'm here in my mold but I'm a million different people from one day to the next I can't change my mold no 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 have you ever been down? Well, I've never prayed, but tonight I'm on my knees. Yeah, I need to hear some sounds that recognize the pain in me. Yeah, I let the melody shine, let it cleanse my mind. I'll feel free now. But the airwaves are clean and there's nobody singing to me now. No change, I can change, I can change, I can change, but I'm here in my mold. I'm here in my mold. And I'm a million different people from one day to the next. I can't change my mold. No, 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 no. Have you ever been down? I can't change it, you know, I can't change it. Because it's a bittersweet symphony. That's life. I'm trying to make ends meet. 
Try and find some money, then you die. I'll take you down the only road I've ever been down. You know, the one that takes you to the places where all the veins meet. Yeah. You know I can change. I can change. I can change. I can change. But I'm here in my mold. I'm here in my mold and I'm a million different people from one day to the next. I can't change my mold. No. no. I can't change my mold. I can't change my mold. You've got to change my mold. No, no. It's just sex and violence, melody and silence. It's just sex and violence, melody and violence. It's just sex and silence, melody and silence. I'll take you down the only road I've ever been down. It's just sex and violence, melody and silence. I'll take you down the only road I've ever been down. It's just sex and violence, melody and violence. Been down, ever been down. I can't change my mold, no, I can't. It's just sex and violence, melody and violence. Never been down, I can't change my mold, no. Never been down, never been down. Mm, have you ever been down? Have you ever been down? Ever been down? I'd like to welcome you sweet to the house of thrillers. I'm Scully, the Try author that ends reads mean. to you. You're a I read my novels and other works in the public domain and submissions from people like you. So buckle up. It's quite the ride. And we'll see you on the other side. Let's go.
Scus, 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 scus,